Happy Friday, everyone. This is Jayashri with another podcast. This series is going to involve questions from my students that I will answer. Sometimes I'll include a reading from a text that I think is really helpful. And today's question is from my student who wanted to know how do I find happiness? And I think this is such a great question because don't we all want to know how we find happiness? And so what I would say is searching for happiness is going to take us away from where we are from where we are looking to be because we are happiness. That which prevents us from experiencing that which we are, happiness, peace, presence, is actually our search outside of ourselves for that which can never bring what we seek. So when we look to the externals of our life for that which is actually who we are, that's why it's called self-realization as the ultimate goal. Self-realization is the ultimate goal. Not that it's even a goal. It's the ultimate pursuit, I should say. It's the reason we are here with a capital S. The kingdom of God is within. It is not in the externals of our lives. This is not to say that we cannot appreciate all the beauty of the world of duality, of the world of illusion. It's just the icing on the cake, however. We cannot mistake our friends, our job, our home, our thoughts, our mind, our body even, our emotions, our spouse, anything where we live, culture. We can't mistake any of those things for who we are, for one thing, or what will make us happy. Our well-being is unconditional. There are no conditions on our well-being. So we don't, we actually find ultimate freedom when we can let go of the myth that things need to be a certain way in order for us to be happy and peaceful. So another component of this is that there is a pendulum in life. It's one of the laws of nature. Cosmic law, however you like to put that. And what it is, is when we seek pleasure when we seek high highs, the pendulum is, sweet, is sweeping way over to one extreme. And it might be fun for a moment, but what we can count on is that the pendulum must sweep all the way over to the other reverse, a low low. And that's why in the East, it is advised to follow the middle way peace. So when we are in presence, which is a middle way, in the moment, in the power of now, rather than in our thoughts, thoughts are always of the past, aka anxiety, I'm sorry, aka depression, or the future, which is anxiety. All thoughts are past and future. So when we're stuck in our head, we're not present. We let go of those thoughts and we anchor ourselves in the vertical dimension, the depth of the now. When we meditate on a consistent basis, this becomes effortless being present. It becomes effortless to align with truth. When we do yoga asana, this is another way to purify the system and unlock energy blockages in the system to balance chakras 
and um, again makes living in our highest vibration much much easier it's also important to get enough sleep to eat a sentient diet which means that it's a ideally if you want to it's a transition depending on where you're coming from diet wise this is something I work on with people the best way to go is ultimately eating a lot of live plant-based foods because they have the highest vibration they have the highest frequency when we ingest dead cooked food it has a frequency of zero zero angstroms fruit on the other hand which is living and raw has eight to ten thousand angstroms you think of the difference between a dead sunflower seed and a living sunflower seed when you plant the living sunflower seed it has the power to grow into a full plant that's the power that you're putting into your body so when you're eating living foods plant-based foods of a high frequency again you're just giving your body your temple the best um, and then there are other things like maintaining you know uh, being careful of what you take in so that would be personally I don't have a TV because I I don't want to reinforce the conditioning of uh, you know falseness of of the world I don't want to reinforce conditioning I don't want to reinforce the collective ego mindset let alone my own individual ego uh, although I have to correct myself there I would never call the ego my ego it's the ego and so these would be some of the ways that I would suggest making it possible to live in happiness or maybe even more adequately put in presence what are your thoughts please let me know subscribe share and let me know in the comments any questions you have on this or any other topic I send you love, light, and presence. Namaskar.